The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests and not necessarily those of the staff and management of WWDB-TV. Welcome to Good Medicine. I'm Counselor Holly Davis, and we're on WWDB-TV Las Vegas Live. Today's program is about bipolar, and it's called About Bipolar. I want to talk about bipolar because I feel like it is underdiagnosed, overdiagnosed in some situations, maybe not diagnosed by the right people, and it feels like a buzzword to me. It it seemed like before it was everybody has ADHD, attention deficit, hyperactive disorder, and now it's bipolar. Everybody has bipolar. I assure you, <laughs> everybody does not have bipolar. We're going to take an assessment so that you can look and see what the actual symptoms of bipolar. Bipolar is not a death sentence. It is a lifelong practice of taking care of the symptoms of bipolar, lifelong practice. It will be something that you will be working on for the rest of your life if indeed you have been diagnosed with bipolar. And it is something that is very, very, very treatable. So that, that's the hope. And on good medicine, I always just want to bring hope. And I'm not going to be able to diagnose you with bipolar by taking these little um assessments. There's a DSM. You could get a diagnosis through a psychiatrist. Psychiatrists are the people that would be best suited to give you a diagnosis of bipolar. Also, a diagnosis is really, we don't know. We really don't know what it is. A diagnosis is symptoms that you're suffering from. And if we can deduce what those symptoms are, we meaning a, a, panel a a team of doctors they then we all are on the same page as to what your symptoms are so you're not your diagnosis I'm bipolar I would hope that that would never even come out of your mouth because you're not you're your given name you're who you are you're suffering from those symptoms and those symptoms can be managed Sometimes if you go to your primary care physician and you say, here's some of the symptoms I'm experiencing, you might be misdiagnosed and given the wrong medication, which will make your symptoms worse. So a lot of times primary care physicians will say, this is not my forte. This is not my genre. This is not my specialty. I've worked with enough psychotropic medications that I can give you uh, an estimate of what I think is wrong instead of us going in there and saying, hey, give me some pills for depression. I think it's really, really important to go and make an appointment with a psychiatrist, not a psychologist, not a counselor, not a Um, marriage and family therapist, not a licensed social worker, a psychiatrist to find out if you indeed have any symptoms of mental health, any mental health issues. And they will go through and look at your family history, look at some of the symptoms and explain to you how to treat it. That's just one facet. It also has to be treated with a counselor so that you have talk therapy Cognitive behavioral therapy works really, really great. That means you're getting it out, the words out of your head, and you have a team now. So you'll have a medical doctor. You want to go get a full medical checkup. You want to talk to your psychiatrist, and you want a good counselor. And support, support, support. And the number one person supporting you if you've ever had a diagnosis of bipolar or you're afraid or thinking or worried that you have those symptoms, then the number one person who's going to be in your corner is you. And I do believe that most mental health symptoms are behavioral. Yes, you're going to have those symptoms. We don't know if it's serotonin, dopamine, it's, it's, it's hereditary. It's something that's happening in your body chemically. But we know that many, many ailments, not just mental health ailments, can be controlled. The symptoms can be dealt with and, and you don't have to suffer. I want to say one more thing about mental health is, and I don't even like that word. I like psychology. I would like to say broken psychology as well, because psychology means healing the soul. Something's broken. Something, something happened. It's all treatable, except for if you don't go get help. And I really think that people wait 
way too long. So then when you're getting to the point where you've suffered and suffered and suffered and suffered for years, then the symptoms get out of control. And now we have a big bear, a big monster that's much harder or a big ship that's harder to turn around as if we would have looked at the symptoms, noticed, checked in with ourselves, looked at some of our behaviors and checked in and said, you know, that's not really me. That's not how I really feel or that I'm concerned about. Yes, be concerned and then let's do something. And I promise you, it's not that scary. It is treatable. There are people out there who are specialists who would love to help you. So we're going to take a small baby break. And when we come back, we're going to take the screening, some questions to find out, do I even have symptoms of bipolar? And if I do, that doesn't mean I have a diagnosis. It means there's some steps that I can take to be in control of my medical management. I'm going to be leading my medical management. I'm not going to just let it go away, let it happen, or let someone else take over my medical management. I'm going to be on top of it. So this this is good medicine. I want you to stay with us. We're talking about about bipolar. Welcome back to Good Medicine. I'm Counselor Holly Davis, and we are WWDB TV in Las Vegas. And by the way, we're here every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time live. We have these programs on YouTube on WWDB TV website as well. So, if if these programs are helping you, one that that is the best thing that it can ever happen is if it's helping someone. And the second thing is if it's helped you, then share it with others about bipolar. Okay. So let's talk about some of the symptoms with bipolar. One of the initial symptoms would be depression. People who have bipolar have depression, but they don't just have depression. They have mania. And it's not just a depression that happens circumstantially. It's clinical depression. Don't know how, don't know why. It just literally falls on you and you're not able to get out of the depression, then mood swings. So then the mood is hyper. So it would be, I'm going to take over the planet, rushed fast speaking, uh, grandiose ideas. Some of them are really uh, not logical. They don't really make sense. If someone else was to listen to those ideas, they would think that they would be big and far-fetched. And then sometimes too much spending, too much drinking. It almost feels like a hedonist kind of feeling when I think about some of the symptoms of bipolar. So there would be um, hypersexuality, hypershopping, those kinds of things. And then a tall tale sign for me would be can take over the planet, have tons of energy with no sleep. So that that's just some of the things prima facie for me, but that to, to diagnose somebody with bipolar under those circumstances, first time I met someone, it would take months and months and months. And sometimes it is circumstantial and we can work through the, the mania and we can work through the depression and, and find answers. So here is a little analysis that, that you can look at. So this can be for yourself or this can be for a family or friend or client. Is this person much more talkative and speaks faster? So I would say pressured speech and thoughts. Their thoughts are just flying, okay? Um, have they ever expressed that their thoughts are racing in their head and they just can't slow their mind down? So uh, uh, overactive mind. And now, now, if you're one of those kind of people that go through all the diagnoses or you see a, a magazine or something that talks about, you know, WebMD, and you're, oh, I have that, oh, I have that, oh, please, please, you do not, <laughs> you do not have that if you have racing thoughts. So many people have racing thoughts and have a hard time going to sleep or, um, you know, we're overwhelmed all the time with so much data. And so let's give yourself a break for today. It has to be a culmination of all of these symptoms. Okay. So, and those are all treatable as well meditation, calming techniques before you go to bed. Um, there's some herbs called just C-A-L-M, calm, that you can take magnesium that help you to kind of slow down before you go to bed, maybe have some lavender, and just see if it works. 
test C. I will say this also about symptoms. If we're talking about children who have some of these symptoms with parents, I want to say unabashedly, unequivocally, go get your child some help right now. Go find somebody, look at your insurance, pay cash, do whatever you have to do. I think that if you think, it may not even be bipolar, if you think your child has any uh, symptoms of mental health that, that, that you're not sure of, the more wisdom you have, the more power you have, go talk to the pediatrician first and go through the work and do some of the other things like the calming rituals before bad, um, eating healthy, drinking lots of water, making sure they have tons of sleep, take away the electronica, do everything that you can do to deduce and then go talk to a doctor, medical doctor, their pediatrician, and then psychiatrist and then counseling, okay? So expressing that their thoughts are so fast in their head, they can't slow it down. Very fast pressured speech. This is the analysis of bipolar. Easily distracted by things, has really a hard time staying on track or concentrating. Almost feels like ADHD, right? Squirrel, that one, you know, they just, they're, they're, think of it like this. Someone with really pressured speech grands ideas and gets distracted what they were doing. Um, much less sleep than um, normal didn't even appear like they missed it have two or three hours up all night and then can just go 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 um, also uh, much more interested in sex hypersexual um, and high risk sex as well doing things that were unusual for them that you or other people might have thought that were excessive foolish risky um, Impulsive behavior, not thinking it through, giving away things, shopping too much, gambling, and de and, and spending too much money where you're like in trouble. Um, I would also say that it does come hand in hand with addictive behaviors as well. So drinking too much as well. That would be another thing. So drinking too much, drugs, um, or gambling so some of those excessive behaviors would be some symbol some symptoms as well so more active and doing a lot more things than usual by the way I want to say this is not just one time that this happens this is something that happens regularly the hyper part but then you also have the other mood swing that is the lower part is the depression. So we'd have to have a combination of things for a certain amount of time. So again, don't go out there and say, oh, that's what I have or that's what she has. It has to be something that's been regular, okay? A lot more social or outgoing, for example, talking to friends, calling them in the middle of the night. Hey, let's go out, let's party, those kinds of things. Uh, could be um, also that the the illogical aggression it could be lots of anger wanting to get in fights maybe unable to talk to your friends or loved ones or maybe a loved one or a friend is always getting into arguments and fights very argumentative and and not able to get them to baseline or quiet or quiet their soul uh, they're just can't can't really talk to them they're just going and going and going that's a, a, a big sign as well so I think going into some of the treatment of bipolar, one, I would definitely say talk to a psychiatrist and talk about those symptoms. If you feel that it is a friend, there is treatment available and it wouldn't be that conversation, I think you have bipolar, okay? First of all, you're, you're not able to diagnose anyone. And the second thing is no one wants to be accused of having a mental illness. Um, it, it still has stigma and the reason why is that very reason is we don't know very well how to handle people, family, friends who have suffered with symptoms of mental illness. Now, we are going to talk about that on my next program, how to handle a family member who has broken psychology. Psychology is healing the soul. So anybody who, who is going through that, if you're a caregiver, um, if you've been through that and your family's gone through that with you, how do we actually approach and care and support for someone who's suffering with these symptoms of, of having moods everywhere? I think one thing is if you have been diagnosed with bipolar, then really experiencing the joy of life. So that would be whatever it is that gives you peace 
in a balanced arena. So that could be the connection and love and intimacy, sexual intimacy with someone that you love, that loves you in a trusting relationship, healthy relationship, good, healthy food, being around family, connected with people that love you, um, work, games, traveling, um, finding new hobbies and new things that are healthy in moderation. So that would be one thing. Temperance, temperance, temperance. I would say finding a really good psychiatrist that listens to you. So if you're on mood stabilizers that help those moods, so not just be so up and down, but stabilizing the moods and you don't like the effects or you don't like how you feel or you feel weird, I would make an immediate appointment and and advocate for yourself because this is also about behavior it's not just about the 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 dopamine and the serotonin and the the levels and the chemistry that's off in your body it's about behavior and changing some of those behaviors so that you feel better definitely need to quit drinking or using recreational drugs and psychotropic meds with drinking or recreational drugs is very high risk and that is a absolute no Taking your medications as prescribed by your doctor is imperative. There is no way you're going to be able to figure out if this is working for you, if the meds are working for you, not in one day, two days, or two weeks. It is going to be a long-term journey to find out what works best to help you with the symptoms so that you don't have to suffer anymore. Forming healthy relationships. So that's positive people positive influence not people that just talk but people that are really a good example good people that are maybe providing support and they can watch for your moods and they can see the warning signs but they are not did you take your pill we're not talking about those kinds of people we're talking about people who are love you enough to give you the gift of honesty and pull you aside and say you know what and not in the heat of an argument or or if you're in a a, a mood swing, it's one of those things. I, I I love you so much that I can't allow you to continue to go on and me not share with you that the way that you're behaving, I'm worried about you. I'm worried about you getting really hurt or, or hurting someone else or just your life is not the way that you're saying that you want it to be. And I just have to hold you accountable to it because I love you so much. It's called carefrontation. We don't have to be confrontational with people. And and creating healthy routines. I can't stress this enough. One of the most important things with bipolar symptoms is you have to create consistency because your mood swings and your dopamine and your serotonin wants to go like this. So you have to make your inner world like this. The 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 addiction to the mania it, it, it's a real thing. And I would say that I'm not saying, hey, make your life boring and don't enjoy, enjoy life anymore. I'm saying the temperance, the stabilization, the harmonizing what you want your life to be. Because when it's out of control like that, you're not able to control your emotions and they just get worse and more out of control every time. So I would say a really important foundation is making sure that you have discipline. And it's going to be competing with yourself, not other people. This isn't about other people. This is about you competing with yourself with getting enough sleep, making sure that you get up at the same time every day and go to bed at the same time every day, Con starting a schedule. It's really, really, really important getting up, going to bed, and make an alarm clock so that you go to bed at the same time every night, not on a whim when someone says, hey, let's go do this. It's no, I'm going to take care of myself. And you don't even owe them an excuse you don't have to tell anybody why you do the things that you do and you don't owe that to anyone it's to yourself your inner being needs the calm needs the quiet so creating a really healthy regular routine not just one week not just two weeks not just 21 days create this for the rest of your life because this treatment will be lifetime practice of changing some of those symptoms that are so extreme so balancing your moods would also be physical activity so good and you know what you're capable of doing not doing any physical activity it would not be that's not going to work you'll have to find solutions because there's swimming there's yoga there's there's walking it doesn't have to be exerting you or taking too much time but just some kind of physical activity eating really clean and healthy i would say bye bye sugar 
I would I would just say bye bye sugar because again it's going to be interacting with of course medications moods and sugar just brings you up and down as well so um, and there's alternatives to that too and it doesn't have to be extreme it can be occasional um, I would say goodbye to it and if you do eat sugar there's healthy natural sugars that you can take as well okay so exercise program uh, there's um, a healthy diet if you have a trouble sleeping there is an app on your phone that you can do it's called calm c-a-l-m and it's going to cost a little money it's an investment in self it's in, it's important to do that there's another one that's called brainwave i think it is a beautiful beautiful program i love it i use it every day and there's different settings that you can use and you can put on one for um, resting and calming your mind so that's important, especially before night. And then there's a um, product called Calm that is an herb that you can take before you go to sleep as well. There's all kinds of mel mel melatonin that helps as well. I couldn't remember the word for a second, <laughs> but melatonin helps as well. And then check with your doctor if you're going to take any other even herbal prescriptions or medications and take those medications as prescribed. And even think about this, a mood chart. Um, now I'm not saying going and getting calendars and, and whatever, but like if you have a planner like I do, maybe even just put your mood for the day. What, how was I? And then you can look back and look at that. This is about you taking care of you, your soul, your psychology, your healing of the soul. And you have a, a, a huge, huge part of taking control of your medical management is you. Okay. And if you're parents, it would be parents helping to guide this. Um, so do not take do not stop taking your medication you have to talk to your doctor before you stop taking medication and do it the way the doctor asks you to do it and don't skip therapy sessions skipping therapy sessions um, on occasions you know I, I understand that maybe make up on the phone um, a lot of people are doing the talk uh, therapy telemedicine or maybe Skype but it's really important to continue to talk to your therapist because what that does with the cognitive behavioral therapy is you're talking about your symptoms you're getting it out of your head and you have accountability and it's not somebody who's who is looking down their nose or accusing or or any of those things you're going down a dark road and somebody right there is right with you so you're not alone and that you feel supported and that you feel understood and not misunderstood so it's really important to find a good therapist that you like and that you feel comfortable with you can go to psychologytoday.com put in your zip code and find a therapist who maybe specializes in your area and then just be aware of um you know potential dangers you don't want to take medications with anything else learn about bipolar and if it's disordering your life it really is important for you to take charge of that and and discover and learn and research about you something that is affecting or disordering your life stay focused on your goals the most important thing you do is take care of you their support gr groups stay um, healthy manage your stress and then I want to give you a number for the National Institute of Mental Health Information Resource Center it's the National Institute of Mental Health Information Resource Center uh, that's NIH and the number is 1-866-615-6464 that's 1-866-615-6464 and I encourage you and along with all of us we that we have information we have accessibility to to resources and medication and professionals and if it is your heart's desire to get that help there are people available it's not like we were in the dark ages there is no reason to have a stigma for mental health when there is accessibility and if you want help i am pretty sure that there is help available to you there's phone numbers that you can call i give them every week on this program psychologytoday.com nih again the number 1-866-615-6464 get the information and get help that's the most important thing you do there's no reason to suffer i'm holly davis and this is good medicine thanks for watching